Hey everybody, this is Aristotle, and we're back with a new iron farm. There were some changes in 1.19 you might not have noticed. They're going to be permanent in 1.20, and that's opening up a whole new world for iron farms and shutting a few down. In fact, this cool, simple-to-build little module is going to change your world because it, in fact, could become the world's largest iron farm. Check it out. <laughs> I'll show you how. Come on. All right, so this farm can be built singly by itself, or you can tile and stack it to any degree that you want. You can build it up in the sky or right here down on the ground. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to build one single module, and then we'll talk about how you can expand, tile it, and scale it up to fit your iron needs. Now, it doesn't have to be as pretty as this. You can do this out of dirt day one on your hardcore server, or you could turn it into this. This right here is what I believe to be the world's largest iron farm. It spits out 8,640 golems an hour, which translates to an average of 34,560 ingots per hour. That's 540 stacks of iron or 10 double chests full of iron. And it all runs with these water streams to go up to one single point of collection right there. In fact, if I stay here too long, all those chests are going to be full in no time. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is what you're going to need to build this farm. Per module, you're going to need a stack and a half of building blocks. Now, you need 19 pieces of glass, essentially, but I threw in a few extra to make 28 to build it in the style that I like that looks kind of good. Now, if fire tick is on in your world, you're going to want to use stone slabs, but if not, you can use 50 wood slabs like I've been using here. Two cobblestone walls, 10 signs, six carpets. You're going to need an infinite water source, a bucket of lava per module, three beds, three villagers, a zombie, preferably a name tag, but you can get the zombie to hold something, and a trap door does help you trap the zombie, but it's not always necessary. And if you're gonna build it on the ground, well, you're gonna need some tools to either texture the ground, you're also, or you can use something as simple like carpet or glass. I'll show you all kinds of tricks for this. This is a really optional system. And you're going to need a collection system. Now, the hoppers don't worry about because once you get the farm up and running, you can just sit there and in five minutes, you'll have enough for five hoppers. Not even, not even that. Chests are something you're going to want to bring along, though. All right, so if we're going to build this module on the ground, we're going to start where we want our iron to end up. And we're going to pick a direction here that the farm's going to go. And we're going to dig out eight blocks right from the dirt. Fill those in with glass. And we're going to dig over one, two, three, four more blocks, just like that. Fill that in. And then, counting this one as one, we're going to go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's going to give us this horseshoe shape. And this will be where our collection system is going to go in the farm. Grab your building blocks and you're going to run down the side here. Then you're going to go across the back and back down the other side. Now the sides here, we're going to make them too tall, just like this. And the back, we're going to go one on there and one on there. And then we're going to make three tall for the three center blocks, just like that. Coming around to the other side and starting on the two block tall, we're going to go one, two, three, and one, two, three. This is where we're going to pop in our glass here. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then back to building blocks. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now this is a good time, especially if you're in survival, that you can boat in or get your villagers on over here. An easy way to do it is just wait till it's almost nighttime and then have them loose. And if they haven't had a bed in access, they'll run on over and grab this bed. So you're going to plop down those three beds 
and three pieces of carpet just like that. Now because it's spawn proof in here you don't have to but if you want to you can light up this and light up the backside as well which is something I tend to do. Now coming up to the front considering it's nighttime and your three villagers are sleeping you're going to want to block them in. So lay down three permanent blocks, three temporary blocks, and then three more permanent blocks just like this. That'll trap those villagers and you're good to go. Now come up to the center and you're gonna get down two and then two more right in front of that. So you'll see that's underneath that center block. Two are missing and then the two here. Grab your cobblestone walls, pop them right in the bottom. And then on the exposed block here, you're gonna wanna dump some water and that'll flow towards the front. That's gonna make the zombie bounce. Building blocks again, go one, two, three. I like to do glass, and then one, two, three building blocks again. You know you got it right when it looks like an A for Aristotle. <laughs> the farm is super simple to load. Obviously, you can just open up the side and drop your villagers inside, or you can lure them up with just a couple of dirt blocks and get them to step up and drop in and onto the beds where they can't get out. Zombies, the same thing. You can just kind of come up here and then give yourself two pillars just like this and a little extension for you to run off on the back. Take that trap door, pop it right there and open it up. Wait for a zombie to spawn and then just lure them right up and over making certain to jump on over. Now, if you've already got your villagers in there, you know, it's a good idea to block him from getting access to that side just like that. But once he falls in, you're good to go. So villagers are in, zombie is in, you got him name tagged or holding something, otherwise he will despawn. And now cover everything up, especially the zombie's head, with slabs. Very important to use slabs here on this part because you do not want an iron golem spawning on top of your iron farm. It will kill your rates. We're almost done here, so we're just going to throw down a few more building blocks. So you'll see the last two blocks here. You're going to go one, two, three. So it juts out one. Do the same on the other side. And then connect those parts up right across. Come in on the inside here. And you're going to place five signs. Start with this one. And by shift clicking, you'll place a sign on. So you go one, two, three, four, five. And now do another five right here. One, two, three, four, five. And this will create the spot for your lava blade. Go to the back of the farm here. Use your water to create a water stream going out. If you built this correctly, it should reach the edge. Hop up on top and shift click on top of the center lower sign, and that will give you your lava blade. And remember how I said about fire tick? Use stone around this section if your fire tick is on. If it is off, like I know it is here, then we're good to go. Now, we want to spawn proof by placing those half slabs across every flat surface around this. And because we built it on the ground, what's going to stop the uh, villagers from spawning an iron golem out here? Well, we're gonna have to spawn proof it. Here's a four module version of this farm and I'm showing all the different ways you can use to spawn proof. Using a shovel, you can turn just regular dirt into pathway dirt, which is non-spawnable. You can use slabs and leaves, work just absolute great. If it's very early game, I like to plant wheat or some type of crop, although it can get trampled by zombies at night, things like that, so it can break the farm. But if you're good about it, or you feel good about it, or you got your eye on the farm, well, then just plant this because you need food too. Just make certain in your water spots here, you put a slab on the bottom half of the water hole. That will keep the iron golem from spawning inside that hole. If you live on a beach or the desert, why not use glass? Glass is a great way to just make it look kind of neat and keep this area spawn proof. Buttons or um, pressure plates work great. Another one of my favorites is this is moss carpet here. It almost looks exactly like the grass and it prevents spawns. And if you wanna get crazy with it, bamboo prevents uh, spawns, buttons, like I said before. Here's a combination of slabs, leaves, dirt path, buttons, 
more slabs to look like rocks. We got some farm stuff and we're using bamboo all to prevent spawns on here. So the only place that an iron golem can spawn is in this section right here. Now, let me show you on our original farm how far you need to go. All right, so villagers can spawn up to eight blocks away. And those nine blocks that make that little villager pod, any one of those blocks can be the spawning point or center point of the spawn. So side to side, what you do is you count this first block right here as one, and you go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how far out they can go. Now, as far as back goes, you can trust me on this one, or if you count it out from the, from the back wall of there, we have eight right there, one block back from the end of the farm. And then from the top, it's one, two, three, four, five, just like this. Or if you count it out, we have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You'll see how it's eight from the villager pot. Zombie doesn't count. And then all you got to do is just fill this in. All right, we're all spawn proof. Now that we got the area spawn proof, we can start making some iron golems. So take out those three temporary blocks. Take your last three pieces of carpet and jump it right there, just right on the thing. That'll stop a baby zombie from being able to jump in and get into the pod. Now, if you're building this up in the air, no worries. You don't have to worry about those three pieces of carpet. But down on the ground, you definitely want it because that baby zombie will ruin your life. All right, and now we've already got things going, but you'll notice we don't have a collection system yet, so let's do that. Simple ways, just drop a double chest right at the end and then knock out these five blocks and put hoppers all pointed in that way to the double chest and you're all done. Like I said before, if you didn't have the iron for the hoppers, well, just hang out here for five minutes and you will, I promise. Now, if you really want to get crazy with this farm, what you can do is use water streams. So you'll notice when this iron golem dies, their stuff goes into a water stream and goes down to the end. And then I just pop it into an item elevator and right into the chest system here. This automatically collects everything. Or you can just keep it hoppers and chests just like this where you can run around and grab everything really easily no matter how many farms you got built up. This is nice and scalable, like I said. Now, if you want to build more than one of these, there's a couple of things you should know. So the first is you have to space them out seven blocks apart from this block here. So you could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then drop what's going to be that corner of this structure, and then just build it out in the exact mirror image of the other one. If you don't like digging into the ground for your chest, you can find a hill in your world, which is hard in a flat world, <laughs> but you can build it up on a hill so it sticks out over the end. And here you have a lot more access to chests. And on this one, I popped a second one up on top. Now, if you're gonna do a bunch of these, you don't wanna shift it back like I did, but if you're only doing two and you just wanna keep stacking them up, you can make them four high and you can see what tiny footprint this has but what I did is I shifted it back and then put a ring of glass so that when the iron drops out it drops straight into the water stream down below and then down and automatically gets put into the hoppers over here now if you're going side to side you just have to go off of the spawnable areas so we know eight blocks from that pod so if we start here say on the kind of back block of this one there's our eight here, and we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then drop a block there. Then this becomes my villager pod right in there, just like that. So it's seven blocks or 14 side to side if you're going from the villager pods and it's seven blocks if you're going this way. Now, why do we do it this way? Well, villagers have an eight block 
radius. That means eight blocks to their left, their right, front, and forward that they can spawn an iron golem, but they can sense an iron golem 16 blocks away. So what that does is it makes it that the closest point in that next farm either to the side or the one in the back here, the iron golem never gets closer than 17 blocks to this set of villagers. So they never sense him and they never stop producing. And that's the key. Oh, and if I wanted to put another one, say right on the top here, I pick a good block that I know where I'm starting from and counting the roof slab as one, I go two, three, four, five, all the way up to 20. And that top 20th block becomes my floor. So if I wanted to make my villager area, I would drop in. And yes, I did add extra blocks in that stack and a half that if you're building in the air, you have enough blocks for floor blocks. So if you're building on the ground, you might find yourself with some extra blocks. Why 20? Well, the villagers up here can sense down for 16 blocks. And if we have less than 20, they'll sense that golem down below them. If you have yourself up where your floor is 20 blocks above the roof of your one below, you're all good to go. Now, when you're done building the one A-frame on your first day on your survival series or whatever you're doing, you can later expand. So just remember to leave room. You can wind up with four here, or you can do the largest version, which is going to be 36 iron farms all on the same level. Side to side, their non-spawnable edges will be touching, and they're all seven blocks apart in between the middle. Not the jutty out part that helps hold in the lava, but the middle part there. And that brings you to this guy here. So I chose to nicely kind of build some trees and trees are actually great because an iron golem won't spawn in this section here it's not tall enough the leaves block them now this one he could spawn under but we've got moss carpet right there and of course slabs bamboo stop spawns all kinds of good stuff and the design for the uh Management, inventory management system, it's all these streams just dug into the ground and they come together here in a point and you can see them running towards our storage system here in the center. As you can see, each level has 36 farms in the same layout I showed you before. And there's three levels. So there's 20 blocks in between each one and then 20 blocks up to the top one here. And as you can see for dropping everything down, oh, excuse me, and yes, you can walk under this without getting burnt. What I did is just use some glass to create a short water stream to an iron bar to center the item. And then it drops directly down into the stream below. Now this one, actually lands in the stream of the next farm down, which then drops it via iron bar into the next stream down. You can play with it and customize it. There's any way you can want to do it. If you want to replace the water streams and just have um, mine carts running, hopper mine carts running underneath the ground, that's a great way to do it. I chose because this, at this point, is the largest you're going to be able to go without causing a server crash. Yes, this is on the Philosophy SMP3 server, which you can play on if you want to. Come join us. Details will be in the comments below. And you too can have more iron than you ever imagine. I'm Aristotle, and it's been a pleasure to show this farm to you. You're definitely going to want to hit that like button and subscribe down below because next week I'm going to show you why your iron farm is slow and how nobody's figured out how 1.19 and 1.20 have actually affected iron farms. And I'm going to show you all the secrets, but you got to subscribe and you got to turn those notifications on to know everything. Thank you. Good night.